world burn October 17th, 2024. Let's get into it. So the first thing I wanted to cover is uh, you ever send that email and uh, you think you said one thing and <laughs> somebody reads it and they interpret it a different way? You know, same thing can happen on social media, you know. So many people, I imagine, you know, sometimes they post stuff that they wish they could take back. And that's why I do like the fact that you can delete your tweets, but then they're out there for everybody. Everybody knows about them. They get captured everywhere. So you got to be so careful about what you say on social media. But sometimes, you know, you're, you're late at night and you're reading it and you're just like, God dang it, I'm going to reply to that. I'm going to reply to that, you know, and you... You have to resist that urge, and I have to admit, I am guilty of not doing that sometimes. And i got to be more careful. So we're going to start with a post that I put up where I wasn't careful enough. <laughs> so, Because uh, I, was, I was responding to a post about the bombing of the hospital in Lebanon. And uh, I, was, uh, I was talking about, you know, how I... Well, let me just read it to you, and then I'll explain. So... Uh, Agreed. I watched those people burn. My latest videos up describing this evil horror story on X, the burn channel on Rumble, that cybersec guy on Odyssey, and that cybersecurity guy on YouTube. So that was the post. And uh, what I meant was I had posted a, a recent video. It wasn't a video specifically about the, uh, the burning of the victims in, in Gaza. Okay. Uh, and in fact, I think it was the video where I talked about at the front about Medicare. <laughs> so imagine most people got into that, especially if they live somewhere else in the world. And they said, oh, what the hell is this? It, it, it was later in the video. I did mention the story, but I mean, it was buried deep in the video. So everybody's like, well, where's the video on, on that story? Well, I'm rectifying that situation right now. If you can't stomach to learn what's really going on in the Middle East and learn about a batshit crazy how batshit crazy Israel has gone then you probably don't want to watch this video okay so we're going to get into it but the first thing I want to start with is I want to call them out man I want to call them out because I, I do when I hike I have to listen I, I listen to the news because sometimes you know I'm just I just not into music that much I, I don't get me wrong I sometimes I switch over to music when I'm hiking you know you always see me with the headphones on uh, but I listen mainly to the news because, you know, I, sometimes I learn something. Sometimes, you know, they got a good guess on and, uh, and I'm like, oh, I don't agree with that. Yeah, I do agree with that. Anyway, I'm going to call them out. Sean Hannity, Mark Levin, Dana Lash, Todd Starnes, Clay Travis and Buck Sexton, Sebastian Gorka, and the rest of you right-wing commentator lunatics. You keep pining and pining and pining over Israel and how October 7th happened and they burned babies and they, you know, put them in microwaves and they raped women. I mean, come on, they were only there for a day and there's lots of evidence out there right now that none of those things had happened, that those were Israeli lies. But the American people believe it because you keep talking about it, you lunatics. Pay attention to what's going on in the Middle East and for once report on a damn story about a bombing. Of a, of a refugee camp or the destruction of a hospital or the, or the you know, the destruction of a, a, a place in Lebanon or the bombing of Syria or the, the, uh, the bombing of the embassy or the uh, consulate by uh, Israel in Syria or the killing of the guy up in uh, uh, Iran. You know, no, you don't report on those things, you right-wing lunatic commentators because you want to play, paint your stinking narrative that Israel is all good and everything that they're the chosen of, of mankind I think not from what I've seen they're freaking uh, Netanyahu is the Antichrist yeah I said it anyway let's just get into the video so I'm going to start with uh, probably one of the fav my favorite people to listen to and I'm always in, in my, my jaw just drops because I'm in awe. This is the, George Galloway is the greatest orator of our time. I mean, I, I would compare him to Abraham Lincoln, you know, from, from what history has shown of Lincoln's speeches because I've read some of them. I don't know how Galloway does it because he, 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 he paints a picture and you just like look at it and you go like, wow, that... I, I, you know, his references to the, the kissing the butt or two butt cheeks. I can't remember. It was hilarious, you know. 
anyway, uh, his, his show is uh, the mother of all talk shows, uh, available here on YouTube. You can always go watch him, but I'm going to steal from him. And I say steal from him. He, he, he gave me a thumbs up, so he said, it, he said it was okay that I used some of his material. Let's watch him talking about Gaza and then a little bit about Ukraine. It's like watching Auschwitz on TikTok as a survivor of the Holocaust, 1938 to 1945. Aaron Matis, dear and esteemed father, just said this week. It's like watching Auschwitz on TikTok. At least if you watch, it would appear that the political leadership in Western countries and virtually every single journalist and broadcaster in the Western media are simply not watching the pictures on TikTok, simply not watching the pictures on X or on YouTube or on the mother of all talk shows. It seems to be the case that they have made a collective decision to pretend that the Auschwitz in Gaza is not happening. That's the most charitable interpretation that I can possibly make, because if it were true that they were watching tents on fire, if it were true that they actually saw the most iconic image of the entire genocide this very week of patients, attached to their IV tubes, being burned alive, scorched and burned alive in a hospital, if it really was true that our politicians and our journalists were watching this but were unmoved by it, well, that would call into question not only their morals but their actual sense. It would call into question whether we are being ruled in Western countries by certifiable maniacs. Because only a certifiable maniac could look at those pictures on that screen, could look at the pictures of the patients with their IV tubes still visible, burning alive in a hot... Only the insane, the certifiably insane, in fact, only the inmates of Ward 5 at Broadmoor, the asylum for the criminally insane, could possibly be unmoved by those images, could possibly want to continue arming and funding and diplomatically covering for and propaganda shilling for acts of mass murder not seen, not seen since Auschwitz, since the Holocaust of Nazi-occupied Europe. And the difference being, they could pretend they didn't know what was happening in Auschwitz because nobody had a camera and nobody had invented TikTok. They have no such excuse in the in the chanceries of Europe, in the corridors of power, in Western parliaments, in the big broadcasting houses, in the big media operations, in the newspaper, newsrooms, in the editorial conferences, none of them, any alibi at all, they are all deeply complicit with one of the greatest crimes of human history. Approaching 200,000 dead Palestinians, 10% of the entire population of the Gaza Strip, up to 70% of them, women and children. Women and children being incinerated, being starved, being poisoned, subject to the four horsemen of the apocalypse, trampling them down in the fruit of their childhoods in too, too many cases. The pictures and the testimony is too damning to ever forgive any of the political actors who have facilitated this. And that means virtually all of them. It means, above all, the President and Vice President of the United States of America. Joe Biden has at least the alibi of being an imbecile. He has the alibi of having Alzheimer's. He has the alibi of senility. Kamala Harris 
has none of those. She knows she's a part of this very great crime and no one should vote for her. Anyone who does vote for her is authorizing, is vindicating these horrific crimes. We'll be talking to Manar Adley, the founder and chief editor of Mint Press, just in a few minutes to talk about these matters. The situation in the Donbass is on one level encouraging. The war is rapidly coming to an end. The bad news it implies the mass death of young and old Ukrainian servicemen swept off the street by press gangs, pressed into the front line, ill-clad, ill-equipped, ill-trained for the purpose. They're fighting gallantly enough. They're fighting bravely enough, but they are being slaughtered in extraordinary numbers. The life expectancy of the 58-year-old men and the 26-year-old boys that are now on that front line must be precious close to just a day or two. The Russian advance continues apace. Russia has decided that it will no longer entertain the likes of Olaf Scholz, the German chancellor, who complains that Vladimir Putin will not answer his telephone calls. It's per perfectly obvious that the Russians have decided they are going to bring this war to a close in very short order indeed. I was criticized just the other day for saying that the war, the war will be over by Christmas. I'm absolutely sure now that it will and not in a good way. The testimony of Professor Dan Kovalik just back from the Donbass will be a very important report on and from the front line. We'll be talking in the course, how can it be otherwise, about the economic collapse as we enter what will be a long and cold and poor winter in the European satrapies of the United States of America. All right, so that was George Galloway. And I, so then, you know, I'm, I'm fishing around and I, I was, because I was just doing the story. I said, you know what, I have, to, I have to correct this because, you know, when you get a bunch of comments about from people saying, where's the video? I said, God, I got to go out and figure out how to do this. And then I just happened to watch Max Blumenthal and uh, Judge Napolitano. Uh, his show is Judge and Freedom, if you want to check him out on YouTube. Uh, he interviews about four guests a day. Very interesting. Uh, most of the time he's talking about the same topics, but there's always a different slant from each guest. And then each guest knows certain things that the previous guest didn't. I watch a lot of his shows. But let's watch him and Max Blumenthal talking about the very same thing, the bombing of the hospital and those burning victims that has gone around the world. If you're not on social media, I guess you don't know. Switching to a slightly different topic, what happened at the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Hospital? Well, this is a hospital in Dar al which is one of the last public hospitals still functioning. And what we see there is what we've seen around other hospitals in Gaza that Israel doesn't like, which is that people gather in tents around the hospital because they see it as a place of safety uh, where they can get services. Um, everybody's sick in Gaza. And Israel bombed those tent encampments. And while the death toll wasn't as massive as, for example, the bombing in December in the Magazi refugee camp that just killed 250 people in one blow for no apparent reason. This set uh, several tents on fire and burned people alive on camera, including a young man who was 18 who had just graduated from medical school a month before and had been writing in his diary about how many times he had cheated death. And you can see him just being burned alive on camera in a really clear harrowing image that distills the Holocaust that people are living through in Gaza. And I think so many people on social media were captivated by this image, and it's why we're talking about it now. Here's um, a journalist whom you may know uh, describing uh, what she saw, cut number nine. They burned people alive. I don't know. They picked this muscle to cause this fire at this time of the night, 
to kill people while they are sleeping. And then these people are waking up, watching their bodies burning, turning into black, and having their last breath in front of the camera. That what happened. They did this. They did this. I know that you will not be able to watch the videos, to watch the pictures, to hear them screaming while they are burning and no one can do anything for them. But the Israeli army did this. Do you, do you know her or have any reason to doubt or support her eyewitness testimony? Well, that's Bisan Auda, who has been doing a lot of first-person testimony, but also documentation of crimes people in Gaza have suffered since October 7th, and her videos and reporting, which has been good, as good as any reporter's, probably more courageous than most Western reporters, has won an Emmy, mm. uh, despite major objections from the Israel lobby. She won a major award for her work. So um, I think it was an Emmy. It might have been a Pulitzer Prize, but she she has been widely awarded. But but we don't need to rely on her testimony. The video is there for everyone to see. The images are there, and it's just an image that captures what has happened to Gaza. I mean, the term "the Holocaust" was sort of chosen to market the very real genocide that Jews experienced. In the Holocaust, but Jews experienced in, in 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 Europe during World War II. Jews experienced this alongside Roma people, alongside Russians who were targeted by fascist forces, alongside dissidents, so many other people. Uh, but this term was chosen to particularize the Jewish genocide and to market it, and uh, it's been weaponized by Zionist forces in order to uh, advance or in order to legitimize Israel's existence as a Jewish ethno-supremacist or exclusivist project and weaponized to shut down those who talk about, who want to publicize the crimes against Palestinians. But we can clearly see, if you look at the definition of the word Holocaust, which simply refers to a massive conflagration that consumes life, that that is what people in Gaza are living through and dying through right now. And the young man who was consumed in flames on video was someone who really represented the hope of Gaza, who wanted to heal people in his life, who had just completed a medical degree, who was the pride of his family. He was not a, uh, a terrorist, as Israel alleges, when it claims it attacked a Hamas command and control center. So this is, this is, this is really, we're really getting to the essence of what Israel is doing in Gaza here. All right, so that was Judge Napolitano on what's taking place in Gaza. Oh, let's continue. Oh, no, cybersecurity guy, you can't possibly have more stuff on how Benjamin Netanyahu is the Antichrist and Israel has gone batshit crazy, killing everything in sight. No, no, you can't have more material. This was the one that I found on RT. I wasn't even looking for this. I was like, are you kidding me? Israel keeps coming up with inventive ways to kill more Palestinians. Soon they'll have them all exterminated. And you know what? The likes of Sean Hannity and Mark Levin and Todd Stearns and Clay and Travis and Sebastian Gorka, I imagine they're all going to get around a dinner table and toast each other and say, thank God that two million Palestinians are dead. You know, and, and now we've moved on to killing everybody in Lebanon. You know what? Let's all freaking go out and have a party. Maybe go on another cruise in Alaska, uh, you know, uh, Sebastian Gorka, and you guys can celebrate. Uh, hopefully you'll have some uh, Palestinian babies that you can throw over the rails, you know. Maybe uh, definitely set them on fire as you throw them off the side of the ship. You right-wing uh, narrative lunatics. You want to just keep going on and on about how Israel was attacked on October 7th, and that babies were put in microwaves, and, and women were raped, and, uh, you know, uh, 
heads were cut off and, you know, Palestinians were eating their genitals. I mean, whatever. I mean, all of the stupid stories that came out about that whole thing, which has all been debunked now. If you ever want to watch The Gray Zone with Max Blumenthal, you'll learn a little bit of a thing or two. But you right-wing host, you don't care. I hope you do get to torture some kids someday because the Israelis are doing it. All right, so let's get into this video. So Israel has unleashed unmanned vehicles on Gaza to kill more Palestinians more efficiently with less risk. Israel is reportedly deploying a new type of deadly weapon in residential areas of Gaza. According to eyewitnesses cited by the Euromed Human Rights Monitor, the IDF has been using booby-trapped robots to bomb the enclave. We can now differentiate between different explosions, so we can determine if the sound comes from artillery, aircraft, or another source. In fact, the sound of the explosion was actually louder than the sound of airstrikes, to the point that white dust covered the entire area. It was later discovered that this explosion was caused by a robot, equipped with tons of explosives, destroying roughly six or seven houses at once. Regardless of whether civilians are inside the houses or not, the occupation army blows up the robot. The use of military robots is currently unregulated, and while there is no common definition of lethal autonomous weapons systems, remotely detonated munitions are considered indiscriminate and cause immense damage. We discussed the distressing development with a panel of guests. I think we're moving into very dangerous times. And what this does is it actually supersizes and almost licenses the inhumanity of wars. And um, what it also does on the other hand, and I think it's very dangerous, is that it sets a precedent that it's the richer countries that are going to uh, benefit from their superior um, uh, artificial in intelligence capacity. And that once again, places poorer nations uh, on the back foot. So it seems like in war and in peace, poorer, poorer nations are always prejudiced for the worse. And certainly in the case of uh, Israel's attack on Palestine and other countries, it's very dangerous because it uh, just escalates the, the, the uh, collateral damage and the carnage. And we've seen from Israel, nothing has stopped them. There's an absolute lack of accountability and this, I think, is just going to fast track the devastation of that region. I think we are entering a uh, uncharted territory because uh, this kind of technology is, besides being futuristic uh, and dystopian, uh, it is, uh, in a sense, inevitable uh, because uh, state and non-state actors uh, in time will start using this. Uh, there was, it seemed to me, some kind of a, a presumption in the West that uh, the Western coalition, the global NATO, call it whatever, is going to have a monopoly on such kind of weapons. And this was actually stated by people such as Robert Cooper, who in his classic Breaking of Nations has written that as long as the West has uh, the monopoly on superior weapons to the rest, uh, the, there will be a global order. The thing is that um, uh, the non-state players can also retaliate. And if we don't have any kind of rules uh, and any kind of morals when it comes to using uh, postmodern weaponry, I think that uh, the global war is uh, really going to be something different compared to what humanity has seen so far. All of these things are super intelligent weapons of terror, which we can definitely say. And one aspect of this um, this new technology that we are seeing, like after gospel, and then after all the technologies, Haspera technologies that Israel has been using, now comes the robotics. Like we were talking about artificial intelligence. Now we have evolved to the use of robotics. So this controversial aspect of the use of AI uh, you know, it, it has severe civilian casualties and, and and this approach raises seriously ethical concerns, obviously, because this uh, totally uh, changes the, sh the, the, the military objectives, the military landscape that we currently are talking about. All right. So that was that video. But now now we got to move on to Lebanon. Now, I've done some videos on Lebanon 
But, you know, I, and I was trying to pull up maybe a couple more videos, but this video will get too long. I wanted to focus on Gaza and the burning of the hospital because of that comment that it, we read in the very beginning. But I've got a brief video here, but I want to read to you before uh, so that you've got the context because this is a very short video. So this is from Adam, and he says, Israel wipes out an entire village in southern Lebanon, home to the 2,000-year-old shrine of Prophet Benjamin. This is a war crime and a crime against humanity itself. Israel is out of control. They need to be stopped. You think? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, there are a few people that agree with that cybersecurity guy. And so anyway, let's watch that brief video. I can't speak to the circumstances around that particular strike, but obviously the loss of uh, civilian life uh, is extremely troubling, and we've made that clear to the government of Israel. More than 400,000 children have been internally placed in September, according to the United Nations Children's Agency, UNICEF. Some 1.2 million children are being deprived of education. Their schools are either being damaged or destroyed by Israeli bombing, while others are being used as temporary shelters. More than 100 children have been killed in the last month alone, 800 wounded, with the United Nations warning of a lost generation of children traumatized by Israel's war on Lebanon. Dr. Bahia Maktabi is among those offering mental health services for free, providing support to those fleeing from the south and southern Beirut. Many are suffering from panic attacks, anxiety, PTSD, and dealing with the loss of siblings and parents. She says that medicine and food is running low, and the situation is worsening due to overcrowding in shelters. Actually, uh, now we're a little bit low on medications as well. So it's not only food, it's food and medication and health and hygiene because people are living in schools. So you have like 300, 400 people living in one area and they don't even have the, the, the ability to shower properly, to wash their clothes properly. And this is definitely affecting everybody's mental health as well, mental well-being as well. On top of the trauma that's happening because of the, all the bombarding and the lack of safety and security, being at the risk of losing your house, your school, your business, depending on the area you are in. The sound of Israeli drones could be heard as we spoke. Dr. Maktabi explained how children are afraid of the skies, with the traumas of the previous civil war being lived again today. She said that Israel's psychological war is creating fear and panic among the people. You have a different problem based on the age range of the people. So for the children, it's the being scared of the sounds and being away from home in a different environment, not having their toys, not having their school, their friends, and the fear that they are taking from their parents. The older you get, the bigger the trauma. Whenever something happens, it's the cumulative effect of everything else that happened. So now we have the trauma of all the past on top of what's happening now. The psychological war is way stronger than the actual war. So anything in media is affecting everyone. Now we know that bombarding uh, are mainly at night, especially on Beirut, you can hear all the airplanes and everything. So whenever people wake up in the morning, and this is what I hear from my clients, whenever they wake up in the morning, they start thinking at night they are going to bombard us, at night it's going to happen. So all day long they are talking about what's going to happen at night. So it's not only what we're living, it's that we are uh, anticipating what's going to happen at night. So it's the fear and the fear of the fear. Israel's bombardment of Lebanon continues unabated, with schools, hospitals and infrastructure repeatedly targeted. The Lebanese government is calling on the international community to bring Israel to heel and is preparing a case with the United Nations and humanitarian organizations. Deliberately targeting civilians is a war crime, yet they are bearing the brunt of Israel's brutal bombardment, leaving a generation of children and young people traumatized by war. This is Steve Sweeney for RT in Beirut. All right, so that was, uh, that was the video on that. Uh, now we get into an Israeli strike on a Syrian port. Now, you remember back, the, Israel struck Syria. They Remember they bombed the, uh, the consulate, Iran's consulate? 
right there in Syria, an embassy, which is a war crime? How many war crimes? I mean, good Lord, I could just keep calling them out. Remember when Israel went into Iran and killed the, uh, uh, the, the representative for ha Hamas, who was a guest of the Iranian government? That's the same thing as let's say that Benjamin Netanyahu came to the United States and he's sleeping in the in the uh, the the house the the guest house next to the White House, and uh, Iran comes in and blows him away. What would the United States do? Well, of course, we did, they would have just killed the Antichrist, <laughs> but uh, which I would be uh, have probably happy about. All right, well, I, I'm never happy for anybody to get killed. I just think that uh, Netanyahu has killed. A lot of innocent people, let's just put it that way, or is responsible for it anyway. He's not, hasn't, he hasn't gone out there and actually choked the kids or set them on fire himself, but he might as well have. All right, so uh, let's, uh, let's get into, uh, so let's get that strike in, in Latia. Latia that. That was a short video. So now I want to do a reading. And this is, uh, I'm going to have to spell his name. It's Noctis, N-O-C-T-I-S, Draven. This was a post that he put up. And I found it very interesting. And I ask you to keep an open mind. I don't, I'm not sure that I believe all of this. And, uh, and I love the way that he, he puts it. It's a very, very long post. And if you want to go follow him, uh, it's at... D R A V E N N O C T I S, and it's it, it'll be above because obviously I'll be cutting and pasting from uh, from his read. Listen closely, read closely, and then go verify before you dismiss me as insane. <laughs> A lot of people are going to think he's insane, but I don't. I don't because of the theme of this video. I believe the fall of Jerusalem in 70 A.D. was the second coming of Christ. I believe historians like Flavius uh, Josephus and others who lived during the times of Christ and after documented this. I have to point to modern events. Stay with me. All right, so do I believe him there? I, I tell you what, I, I, everything I've ever read and says that, no, that's not possible. <laughs> but but I, it's the rest of this that I really want you to get into. I believe that the tribulation, revelation, and other events we think will come, have already come. I also believe the thousand-year reign of Christ has already taken place. I believe that the timeline we are in is near the very end of what you know is Revelation. I believe that after the thousand-year reign, Satan was released from the pit where he would go on to deceive the world for a short season. I believe we are living in that season right now. Now, bear with me. Bear with me because he's getting to the point where you're going to be like, Wow, this guy's making a lot of sense all of a sudden. All right, so the, uh, in the short season when Satan released and allowed to run amok for the single purpose of deceiving the world, I believe this is what we see. Okay, now think about this. This is what we're seeing. I mean, I was like reading this going like, well, the first I was just going to dismiss it out of hand. And I said, oh, man, this guy's batshit crazy. <laughs> and, but then I got into it. So I just kept reading along. Whoops, God dang it. I, you, I tell you, if you... Touch the phone, it just goes crazy. Uh, uh, everything is inverted, up is down, evil is good, and so on. Could it be, assuming that Satan is the deceiver, that we are all lied to? Could it be that Israel is in fact not God's chosen people, but instead the God of this world and of this, this season's chosen people? Now, when he says that, I want, you, I want to point out that Netanyahu rules the United States. Okay, we are, we are the, uh, the, our government is the puppy dog of Netanyahu. And why is that? Remember the Congress when they gave him 85 standing ovations when he came in and just said a bunch of nonsense in front of Congress? Netanyahu rules the United States. How is that possible? I mean, so when he says that, take, don't take it with the grain of salt. Anything Netanyahu says the United States does. We got, a, we got carrier groups parked over there for months at his behest, we just sent the Thad uh, um, uh, system over to defend Israel. We're putting 100 American soldiers in the way. Israel's going to demand that we go to war against Iran, and we'll do it. And when I say Israel, Netanyahu, 
That's why I say he's the Antichrist. He rules the United States. It's unbelievable. I mean, when you think about it, as, as McGregor puts it, I mean, he, he can wag the, he's wagging the dog. You would think that the United States, uh, well, the Democrats, you know, I think the Democrats are his minions. Satan's minions, right? I mean, I, that's who they are. Anyway. Uh, could it be this explains why so much of the world and those in it are evil, corrupt, and nothing makes sense? Could it be that those who stand against Israel are in fact the good guys? Could it be that support for Israel is supporting the chosen people of the serpent, and that old serpent from the pit who was allowed, was allowed to deceive the nations? Could it be that we are so close, so very close to the end, that it is not the rapture, revelation, or Armageddon that comes next, but instead Gog and Magog? I've thought about that quite often. Is this Gog and Magog? And who is Gog and Magog? I always thought that the, the Russians were going to be on the evil side, but now, I swear, I mean, I've come around. I, I see the Russians being on the good side. I, I'm sorry to say that. A lot of people, oh, you're just a Putin lover. You're just a Putin lover, that cybersecurity guy. Oh, yeah, okay, go ahead. Go ahead and make fun of me. I don't care. What if instead of standing against Muslims who share so much with and the ones who believe closer than anyone else that what we do, could it be that we should stand with them? Well, a lot of Muslims do stand with Christians, okay? So he's right about that. Uh, I know that I've got no beef against the, any Muslim that I meet. You know, I, well, there are some bad Muslims, and there are definitely bad Christians, and I quoted some of those at the beginning, talking about those radio show hosts. Huh? Those are bad Christians. Uh, look around at the world in Satan's little season. Look close. Degenesy, war, pedophilia, poverty, debt, banking, corruption, murder, rape, starvation, genocide, and the only ones who thrive and rise are the ones who do most of the evil and are the most selfish. I encourage you to watch my last video it, with the crunching leaves and all. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. And uh, where I talked about the bankers are ruling the world. Okay. And, uh, and so evil has taken the world. And it's been that way for about the last 500 years. And I tell you all about that in the previous video. I won't go into it again. Is this not Satan's, do you not see who is rewarded and who is kept down and punished? The point of what I'm sure you assume is insane ranting is this. What if, what if you are wrong? What if you are supporting and backing Israel and truly believe you protect God's people? What if you are right, but it's not the God that you assume? You know what, I, I, when, when October 7th happened, I mean, when he makes this point, I, I, I was like, oh man, we got to go in there and take Hamas out. You know, by any means possible. You know, now I didn't want the bombing of, of, I didn't want the genocide of Gaza. I didn't want the kids and the women and everybody else to die. I wanted troops on the ground. You know, and, it, it, and since Netanyahu rules the United States, I wouldn't have mind sending in some special forces to root out Hamas. Okay? But that isn't what happened. We just stepped back and gave uh, uh, Israel, but you know, that's what I'm saying. The Democrats are, are part of it. They're Netanyahu's minions. They give him 2,000 pound bombs like they're candy, in, in, no matter where he drops them. So, uh, what if the people you call terrorists, Hamas, Hezbollah, Houthis, Russians, are it, in fact the good guys? How can you be sure? If we are in Satan's little season, am I strongly, and as I strongly believe we are, wouldn't history be altered? Wouldn't it be slanted? Wouldn't it be down, left, be right? Is Satan not the deceiver? Look at your leaders. Look at the media. Look at your state in the, in the West and tell me you are not on the wrong side. Maybe you don't agree with me, but you must admit something feels off. Something does not feel right. Don't ignore that feeling. You know what? I thought that was a brilliantly written host, and I bet a lot of people shut off the video. If you made it to this point, I, my congratulations to you because it does make you think about a lot of things. And I, I've been wrong about so many things in life, you know, and so I, unfortunately, it's, it's, your mind gets opened up with, with crazy stories like that. So anyway, we're going to get to the, to the, the, the final, uh, final uh, uh, part of the video here. Um, so now this is, this is getting into, I want to answer a couple of comments that I got on some previous videos. 
so if you're not interested, but I think you will learn a thing or two because I do read my comments, as you saw at the very beginning of this video. So the comment was, and I thought this person was, was fantastic, uh, and I won't name them. It says, when the Duran walk and talk, we aren't forced to listen to their feet with this ridiculous level of noise. <laughs> I just fast forward to where you aren't trudging and crunching. You know what, they, they were referring to the video, I was out doing a hike and there was all these leaves underneath my feet. And, uh, and so they were crunching. It was really loud in the video, I have to admit. And it was a very major distraction. And so this was an absolutely legitimate comment. But I wasn't sure, you know, I said, okay, I, I, I know where they're coming from, you know, because uh, when you watch the Duran, he has perfect audio. I mean, but he's got a team of people that do all his editing and everything, and he's got all the equipment, you know, and I, and I don't. Well, I'm rectifying that situation based on this comment alone. And uh, we're going to get into that because this is where if you want to make videos or learn a little bit about uh, being a simple uh, a YouTuber, uh, I think I can help you out just a little bit because I'm helping myself. But I thought that was, uh, and so this was my reply to them. Thank you very much for this comment. You are completely correct. <laughs> I have been uh, researching a sound solution for a long time. Okay, there is uh, the Rogue, a uh, Rode uh, wireless probe, and the DJ uh, Mic 2, but the price is over $300. And I didn't want to spend $300 for a little bit better sound. Now, it would be a lot better sound <laughs> when you're crunching over leaves. But most of the time, my audio is pretty good with just, you know, not having the, the noise dampening uh, of, a, of a wireless receiver. But anyway, so I had to change that because I do want to hike in the leaves more often. And so I, I, I got to thinking about it. Plus, I could not get in touch with their technical support to determine how long these products are ex were expected to last, a.k.a. battery life, and what happens when they fail. Are they garbage? Are they, do you recycle them? Do you trade them in? If anybody has the answer to those three questions, I still haven't gotten answers. It's impossible to contact any of these companies that make these wireless microphones. I mean, they make, there's not even a phone number to call. Well, in fact, I did call DJ because I called the technical support. And this guy, I swear the guy was brain dead. I kept repeating my question and he goes, so your yeah, device has failed. I said, no, I haven't bought any device. I'm trying to find out what's the battery life. You say your battery is dead. No, the battery's not dead. <laughs> I'm trying to find out before I buy the product. What is that? And we just went back and forth like that for like 10 minutes before he finally goes, let me go do some research and I will find out. You know, and I hardly understand him. He was obviously based out of some foreign country somewhere, which doesn't give me much faith in a DJ mic, right? So anyway, I, I'm going to continue here. I was unwilling to upgrade my sound quality without answers to these questions at that cost. Okay, so understand, I mean, the, these wireless mics are going to be a paperweight in a certain, after a certain period of time. I don't know what that period of time is. Is it a couple years? Is it three years? I don't know. And so I'm not going to put 300 and some dollars into a sound solution just to, and only 10 people watch my videos anyway. <laughs> you know, so what, what was the point? But then I came across, I did come across a solution and I pulled the trigger on it. And I'm going to educate you on that right now. However, because of your comment, I wanted to reconsider and I found the Hollyland Lark M2 solution. You can go watch YouTube videos on that. It's an excellent solution. And I got it for about $150, but I bought the combo kit. And the reason I bought the combo kit, I don't have a camera, camera, you know, but there's a, you can hook it up to a camera and you can also hook it to your phone. And I wanted to be able to hook it to the PC. So I wanted to be able to use at least the phone and the PC. Cause I, like, and I do have a camera, but it's an old camera. And someday I might buy a new camera. But, I, but the, the combo kit, I want to tell you, wasn't that much more than just buying like the cell phone solution. Okay, and it's basically the same hardware, except you get a couple more devices. So I encourage you to go ahead and get the combo kit. I think that the, the cell phone solution was like $119 and the combo kit was like, 150 with tax okay so uh so look at the lark uh the um let me get back to where i was uh trudging uh, yeah and so that you'll never have to listen to the trudging and crunching again <laughs> all right the, the other thing was uh you know i use this this simple mic for for recording videos of course it's in the view you i could get one of those boom arms and come in and uh and i've researched this like you could do the uh the uh, Saramonic uh, V6 shotgun mic for $800. <laughs> you 
know, with a boom pole and you know make these videos look more professional. Believe me, I do a lot of research into this stuff. I just don't have the money for that sort of thing. And no, if if, if I had a, a million person audience, yeah, I would be spending the freaking money because I'm making money and I would want to improve the quality of my production. But I, right now, this is just a hobby for me. So the the Samsonic Songbird. I just want to read you what it is. It's a it's a it's a professional level super cardioid shotgun condenser microphone designed to deliver superb audio capture for a variety of indoor, outdoor, and in-studio shooting scenarios, perfect for feature and indie film productions. Uh, and, well, it's $500. I was wrong about the price. Do you think I'm going to be doing an indie film production <laughs> anytime soon? I mean, come on. I can barely make these videos, you know? So anyway, let's, uh, let's get into... Um, that this was uh i wanted to so the other thing there are stuff that i am buying okay so in addition to the uh the, the wireless mic i bought this right here and this is the uh ugreen uh 300 watt fast charging power bank 48,000 milliamp uh um uh, power you know power bank all right so i can use this right now i got the lights plugged into the wall okay but i can use this to power the lights so now I don't have to worry about having a, an outlet nearby. So if I want to make an outdoor video with better lighting or go someplace else uh, where I don't have to worry about having an outlet nearby, I can use this to power the lights. But it's also, I mean, if go up and uh, watch a YouTube uh, review of this power. Now, granted, it's not that portable. I mean, it's portable. It's got the handle. Uh, and this would be excellent for like camping, you know, if you wanted to make videos while you're camping and have the lights on and everything. And it's excellent. I mean, you can charge your cell phone, I don't know, a gazillion times with this thing. This thing is powerful and it lasts a hell of a long time on one charge, which is great for power outages. I wish I'd had it during the hurricane. <laughs> you know, So I am upgrading the hardware. I, but this was, and, and by the way, the, the regular power banks were, once again, they were like 99 bucks or something for the little ones, and they only charge your phone like four times, maybe, you know, whatever. This thing was, wasn't that much more expensive. And man, I mean, you want to talk about, and it's, it's got some features you got to learn about. I mean, you, you can have the input and the outputs going at the same time. A lot of power banks, you can't do that with, you know. And it's got multiple ports. Look, it's got two USB ports. It's got two output ports and one input port. I love this thing. And it's got a light, okay? So you can cut the light on. I, like I, haven't, I haven't quite figured out how to cut the light on. Let's see. Uh, well, there you go. Let's at least look at it powered up. See the, see the readout? That's pretty cool. So you know exactly what your charge is. And uh, I'll figure out how to cut the light on <laughs> eventually. I figured you just, there it goes. Yeah, see, there you go. It just, it's at the bottom of the light. Isn't that cool? So if you're out camping, this would be cool, the power supply, because you got the light. I thought that's, too, I don't know, it's just cool. And it's got multiple settings for, for different uh, 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 stuff. Now, I also just purchased, uh, it, uh, by the way, I go with Google Fi. Yeah, I'm, I'm worshiping the enemy, unfortunately. <laughs> But they always, the reason I do it is they offer these deals, okay? Because I guess Samsung's getting ready probably, and I don't, I haven't, I haven't seen a video on this, I got not, but I'm just telling you because of what's happened. They must be getting ready to come out with the Samsung Galaxy uh, Ultra S25. Because when they do, what they do is uh, Google Fi will run a special on the previous phone, which, well, right now it's the current phone. This is the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Okay, now I've got, I'm filming this with the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Okay, so I'm just upgrading my camera from one to, to a greater level. All right, and this, uh, this phone here is, is an S24 Ultra. So I, you know, I always keep two of them uh, just in case. I tell you, nothing like losing a phone and then you don't have a phone. So I always have two phones. But anyway, they offered, it's, it's regularly $1,200 and some dollars, I think. And they offer, what they do is they offer $600 off, but you have to uh, stay with Google Fi as your cell phone service for six months, and then you get, you get the $600. So you're paying the money up front. And, uh, well, if, if you cancel your service, then they're going to charge you for the $600. Okay, and you're going to pay full price, $1,200, but you get $600 off. And the other advantage that Google gives me is you get a trade-in. Now, I could go to uh, eBay and go through the hassle, and sell this phone, uh, this S20, well, that S23 that I'm filming with, uh, and get a better price. 
but the trade-in on the S23 is $270 if it's in perfect shape, which mine is, all right? So now I'm getting the phone, you know, for basically, what, 400 bucks, 300 bucks or whatever. I mean, you do the numbers. I, I, I can't do math right now. <laughs> but, uh, but you can see, you know, what, $600 off of 1200 brings it down to 600 and then another 270 off of that. So that's 500 400 uh, well, 320 Well, $320, I'm getting a brand new Samsung Galaxy S24. We're going to finish off with some videos burning their clothes. And we're, this is going to be in memory of Aaron Bushnell. You probably don't know who he was. He set himself on fire, which I wouldn't recommend you do. I think he could have helped the world in a better fashion than setting himself on fire. But it was in protest of what was taking place in Gaza, and boy, he figured it out a lot sooner than the rest of us did. And uh, this was, uh, once again, not this, uh, this was his dedication. And I'll read this before we put up this final little clip. U.S. veterans burn in their uniforms. They served the beast in Iran and Afghanistan. I was over uh, in, uh, actually, Kuwait. Um, Afghan lies. Now they know the truth, as I have learned. Yeah, there were no weapons of mass destruction. We went over on an evil errand to help the, uh, the globalists steal Iraqi oil. Same thing with uh, our invasion of Syria, to steal the Syrian oil. Yeah, uh, eyes wide open. Eyes wide open. And uh, uh, what Americans, why, uh, why do Americans ignore those of us who know the truth and try to warn others? I know what you say. Maybe you say that we are angry, bitter, and disgruntled. This is why, or this is why we speak out. The truth is simple. We don't want others, more of our people, to live the lie that we did. That's the only motive we have. And I couldn't say it better than he just said it. And that's one of the reasons that I have a hard time being around veterans. Uh, I, you know, I want to go to my local VFW, and I want to go to the American Legion. But I, when I get in there and I try to just, I, you know, you always, I always try to probe these topics to see if people want to discuss them. And they're, oh, that's politics. I don't want to talk about that. There's no greater mission for a veteran than to help, I mean, to continue your service to the United States, to our country. No greater service can you give. And yet these veterans, when I go to these places, they're not about serving their country at all. They couldn't give a crap. They just want to get in there and talk about football. And, and I understand it's a place you want to get away from stuff. Uh, but if someone wants to engage you in a little bit more meaningful conversation, I don't think that's completely wrong. But I mean, if you don't want that conversation, I completely understand. It's just that, you know, nobody wants to talk about it. And if you do, they, I've actually, you know, they've threatened to throw me out of the VFW uh, when I say something wrong, you know. Oh, that's politics. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to have to get you out of here. You know, you don't, we can't talk about Afghanistan, the pullout from Afghanistan. No, that's, that's political. How is that political? You know, that was back when I was very angry about what took place, too. I mean, obviously, I probably didn't present my argument <laughs> in a civilized fashion. We're going to finish off the video. Peace out. Stay free.